Why is it important to focus on freelancers and their well-being? Well, I think the whole um, the whole attitude towards freelancers has changed radically in the last ten years. Traditionally, freelancers uh, or using freelancers was seen as a cost-saving measure because uh, employers, at least in concept anyway, wanted to retain the essential core skills that they needed for their business in-house in permanent employment and contract out everything else. And freelancers uh, were really categorised with a whole variety of other workers like part-timers, home workers uh, um, uh, and uh, temporary agency staff as being somehow, and these were the words that were used, peripheral, marginal, second class. And I think we still have this conception today. I mean, I noticed very interestingly that Anna Subri, while she was very much on side, slipped into old talk when she talked about the problems freelancers had compared with people in proper paid work. And we still have this view, I think, of it being second class. But in fact, what's happened in the last 10 years, as obviously Ipsy has been the first to emphasise, is that freelancers now make up 14% of, uh, of the UK labour market. Uh, uh, you've got 4 million freelancers working. Uh, and suddenly what employers are finding is that the skills that they need to run their businesses, which they would have previously had among their full-timers, aren't available because more and more people, including young people particularly, want to go into freelance work. So for the first time, suddenly, it has become a policy imperative to look at what motivates, what supports freelancers in a way that wouldn't have been the case even as, uh, uh, as much as 15 years ago.